Hi, this is Mrs. Basin, and today we're going to talk about further applications of the ideal gas equation, which is section 10.5. So another thing we can do with the ideal gas equation is we can rearrange it so that we can solve for molar mass or solve for density. So the equation you see here, the m equals dRT over p, um, is another variation of that ideal gas law that if we're given a molar mass or we're given a density, we could use that to solve for one or the other. So M stands for the molar mass of a gas in grams per mole. D stands for density of a gas in grams per liter. R is still 0 0.0821 liter atmospheres per mole K. Temperature still has to be in Kelvin and P is still pressure and again has to still be in ATMs because that R value is in there. So let's look at an example of how we could apply this. So this question says, what is the density of carbon tetrachloride vapor at 714 torr and 125 degrees Celsius? So we're going to make a list of the information we have here. So they're asking for me to find density. So I'm going to put a question mark there. So I know that density is what I'm solving for. I have a pressure of 714 torr, which we're going to have to change to ATM. And then I have a temperature of 125 degrees Celsius, which I will have to change to Kelvin. Um, so if I look at my formula here, my molar mass is equal to density RT over P. So there's my formula. So molar mass, if I know what the substance is, so I know carbon tetrachloride is CCl4, then I can solve for my molar mass by just adding up 1C plus 4Cl. So if I do that, my mass is 154.0 grams per mole. And then now I have enough information to solve for density. So M, I'm going to substitute as 154 grams per mole. D is what I'm looking for. R, like we said, is 0 0.0821 liter atmosphere per mole Kelvin. I'm going to leave those out because I'm going to run out of room here. Temperature is 125 degrees Celsius, which we're going to add 273 to get our Kelvin temperature, which is 398 Kelvin. So that goes there. Then I'm going to divide by the pressure. Pressure is in torr, so I have to do a little conversion here. 1 ATM 760 torr. So my pressure ends up being 0.939. So I'm going to rearrange all that, solve for density. My density ends up being 4.43 grams per liter. So there's a couple example problems at the end of that practice packet you did um, yesterday day in class. So if you want to work through a couple more examples of this, you can go back to that um, to do so. Okay, another application of this is adding in some stoichiometry. So we know that PV equals nRT, but for N to get moles, if you're not, if it's, if you're talking about a chemical reaction, then you could potentially have to use stoichiometry to come up with your mole value. And this could be used either before you use PVNRT or after you use PVNRT, depending on what you're given and what you're being asked to find. So let's look at an example for this one. This one says we're talking about airbags. So airbags are inflated by nitrogen gas and that's caused by the decomposition of NaN3, which is called sodium azide. So if an airbag has a volume of 36 liters, so as we read through this, I'm gonna go ahead and make my list of stuff I have here. So my airbag has a volume of 36 liters, and this is liters of nitrogen, because that's what's filling the airbag, and it's filled with nitrogen gas at a pressure of 1.15 atm, temperature 26 degrees Celsius, and I wanna know how many grams of sodium azide must be decomposed. So be careful with these problems because they're giving you a lot of information and if you're using that PV equals NRT, you have to make sure that you're using the information for the gases. So what we can do here is we have a volume, a pressure, and a temperature for nitrogen. So I can do PV equals NRT and solve for moles of nitrogen gas and then use moles of nitrogen gas in stoichiometry to get to grams of sodium azide.
So I'm going to start with my PVNRT. So P again was 1.15 ATMs, already in ATMs. Volume, 36 liters, already in the right units. We're okay with that. N is what I'm solving for, 0.0821 for my R value. And then my temperature here is going to be, I'm going to add my 273, and I get 299 Kelvin. So my temperature is 299. Okay, so then once I do that, I solve for N, and N ends up being 1.7 moles, and again, this is moles of N2 gas. So then I'm going to now go from moles of nitrogen over to grams of sodium azide. Okay, so I'm going to start a stoichiometry problem now, starting with 1.7 moles of N2. I can change to moles of sodium azide using my mole ratio. So 2 moles NaN3 for every 3 moles of N2. And again, those are coming from my balance equation out here. That's where those 2 to 3 came from. And then my last step will be to use the molar mass of sodium azide, my NaN3, to come up with grams. So molar mass of that is 65 grams. So when I solve that, I end up with 71.5 grams of NaN3. The other way you can see these problems is you may have to do a mole conversion first to get N and then put it into PVNRT. But the big thing here is to be careful of what information you're using and make sure that the information you're using is for the right piece of this particular problem. Okay, last way that this could be applied that's a little different than just the straight problems like we've looked at before um, is if you are at standard temperature and pressure. So if you're at STP, which standard temperature again is 273 Kelvin and standard pressure is 1 ATM. So if they use that STP value or description, that means your standard temperature 273 Kelvin, standard pressure of 1 ATM. If you are at those under those conditions, then one mole of gas, doesn't matter what it is, but one mole of any gas is equal to 22.4 liters. So if that is the case, sometimes you can just solve a gas law problem by doing straight stoichiometry. So we're going to look at our last example of how that might look. So here we go, we have an excess of hydrogen reacts with 14 grams of nitrogen at STP. So again, they'll either flat out say STP or they will give you the temperature and pressure conditions that you'll have to recognize are STP. So we want to know how many liters of ammonia are produced. So again, we're starting with 14 grams of nitrogen and we want to know how many liters um, and NH3 is ammonia, liters of ammonia are produced. Now because we're at STP, we can do this as one big stoichiometry problem. Now you could still do PVNRT, do the mole conversion and then do PVNRT, you would get the same answer, but this is just, if it's at STP, then you can do it as one conversion, that saves a little bit of time. So we're going to start out with our 14 grams of nitrogen, so 14 grams of N2, which is given right here. So the first thing we have to do is convert to moles. So one mole of N2 is 28.02 grams. Then we're going from N2 to NH3. So we're going to use the mole ratio. So there's one mole of N2 for every two moles of NH3. This is our last step where now, since we're at STP, we can use one mole of gas equals 22.4 liters of gas. So this is where we'll use that. So we'll say one mole of NH3 is equal to 22.4 liters of NH3. So that'll end up with our final answer here. So if we do the calculation, we end up with 22.4 liters of NH3. Okay, now like I said before, you could have stopped right here at this point, 
solved for moles of NH3, and then from that done a PVN or T problem to solve for volume, and you would get the exact same thing. But like I said, this just saves time because you can do it all in one step.